Dies ist der Mauticast. Alles über Open Source Marketing Automation mit Mautic. Und das hier ist dein Gastgeber, Ecki Gümbel. Ja, hallo Welt, hallo Mautic Welt und hallo Thomas Welt. Hey. <lacht> ja, die Thomas Welt hat euch gerade grüßt. Und ich grüße auch die ganze Welt. Ja, super. Ähm, ja, unsere Welt ist mal wieder groß heute. Wir haben einen Haufen Themen. Ich glaube, das habe ich die letzte Mal immer erzählt, aber es ist einfach so viel los gerade. Ne? Die Liste ist lang, ja. Mhm. Auf jeden ähm, Fall. Und wir haben tatsächlich auch relativ viel rauskürzen heute, müssen heute, damit es nicht zu viel äh, zerstreut das ist, aber es ist echt viel los. Am besten immer auch ein bisschen selber auf dem Laufenden bleiben. Und das Wichtigste findet ihr natürlich hier. Außerdem haben wir Futter für die nächste Folge, deswegen, falls ihr es noch nicht gemacht habt, immer ab abonnieren. Oh ja, Mensch, sind wir gut heute. Gut, okay, unser Interview heute, ähm, habt ihr in der Überschrift gelesen, ist mit dem Juan Fach, einem ähm, ja, in Andalusien äh, beheimateten Salesforce-Menschen, mhm. der aber auch schon relativ lange mit Mautic sich beschäftigt hat und der uns von daher mal ganz spannende Perspektiven von außen geben kann. Mit dem habe ich mich tatsächlich über Integration und Richtungen für Mautic unterhalten. Jo, ähm, noch ein kleiner Teaser für später. Wir sprechen natürlich über die Mauticon und wir mhm. haben auch ein kleines Giveaway zum ersten Mal. Yeah. Und zwar ähm, nicht nur Mautic-Freikarten, sondern auch noch Gutscheine für den für Mautic-Training-Rabatt. Also es gibt den Training-Day. Ja, ich verrate mhm. schon wieder alles, ne? Okay. Ja. <lacht> äh, und da gibt es dann noch Rabattgutscheine. Gut, später mehr. Ähm, wir starten genau. mit ganz banalen Dingen. Ja, also banal ist es gar nicht. Es gibt die Mautic Version 3.1.2, die fix tatsächlich, wie das bei den Bugfix Releases so ist, ein paar Dinge, unter anderem Bounce Handling. Das war in der 3.1.0 und 3.1.1 ein bisschen nicklig und ist jetzt auch wieder behoben. Ja. Und ein paar andere Sachen, glaube ich. Ne? Ja, genau, also es war einiges nicklig und diese macht einen sehr soliden Eindruck jetzt und ich bin ganz happy. Genau, genau. updaten ist angesagt. Jupp, testen wir immer auch. <lacht> Gut, ähm, dann eine Ecke, in der sich sehr, sehr viel tut gerade, ist Content, den Leute veröffentlichen, also Tutorials für über alles Mögliche. Und da sind wirklich auch viele Nuggets dabei. Wir haben mal drei Stück rausgepickt heute. Mhm. Das eine kommt von einem Dane Menke äh, von Cactus Automation. Also er ist Cactus Automation und er ist zu Hause in wunderschönen Kalifornien. Und der hat geschrieben über die Detailkonfiguration, wie ich Absender äh, in Mautic an den verschiedenen Stellen konfiguriere und wie das zusammenspielt, damit da nichts schief geht. Also relativ mh, umfangreicher Artikel zu einem relativ schmalen Thema. Also wer da Unsicherheiten hat, der kann sich das gerne mal angucken. Mhm. Das zweite kommt von unserem alten Freund Joey und der ist mal, hat die E-Mail-Welt verlassen und äh, hat einmal sich angeschaut, wie eigentlich Kampagnen und Trigger und so weiter genau funktionieren Und das ist ein Ding, wo immer wieder Leute ähm, scheitern oder ihre Kampagnen falsch bauen, weil sie, sie nicht genau wissen, wie das alles ist mit Conditions und so weiter. Okay. Und mhm. ähm, kann man nicht oft genug erklären. Von daher auch dieser Link, wie alles andere natürlich, in den Show Notes und schaut euch das an, wenn ihr Probleme mal habt. Vielleicht hilft euch das ja, den Knoten zu durchschlagen. Genau, das erklärt so ein bisschen die Logik auch dahinter, ne? Ja, und er hat, ich glaube, er, er war sich selber nicht so sicher, hat ein paar Dinge ausprobiert und erzählt davon auch. Mhm. Genau, und das andere, was Joey auch geschrieben hat, ist ähm, über das Thema Double Opt-in und zwar mehrsprachigen Double, Double Opt-in, wie man das effizient und schlank gestalten kann. Das ist also unser dritter Tutorial-Link dieser Woche und ähm, all das, wie gesagt, in den Show Notes. Und das ist ja eigentlich alles was für die Knowledge Base, ne? Ähm, definitiv. Ähm, ich glaube, wir haben noch gar nicht so richtig darüber gesprochen, dass die inzwischen gelauncht ist. Also äh, bisher nur angekündigt. Also die Knowledge Base ist ja die Community Knowledge Base. Es gibt viele Knowledge Bases, aber die Mautic Community Knowledge genau. Base, die offizielle, ist inzwischen live. Auch die verlinken wir gerne. Und die hat ja nicht nur speziell erstellten Content, sondern ist absolut dazu da, auch Third-Party-Content, äh, der gut genug ist und der wichtig genug ist, da wiederzugeben und dann halt auch zu, äh, zur Quelle zu verlinken etc. Das heißt also, wenn jetzt ein Joey oder ein Dane oder wie auch immer ähm, so ein gutes Tutorial hat, dann kann der halt auch hingehen und sagen, hey, lass uns da reinwerfen und äh, ich habe die Backlinks und den Fame und alles und ähm, die Mauti community hat, ähm, hat wieder mehr Wert geschaffen. Finde ich super. Ja, und ich bin mir sicher, Leon und sein Team 
ähm, würden auch aktiv auf solche Autoren zugehen, aber jeder Autor darf natürlich auch sehr gerne sich melden. Ich glaube, der Link ist auch in der Knowledge Space ganz prominent. Gut, das äh, sei erwähnt am Rande. Dann gibt es eine weitere große boah, Themenwolke, die mir gerade so, <lacht> so dynamisch erscheint und das ist das Thema Workflow Automation. Und damit meine ich nicht jetzt eine Kampagne innerhalb von Mautic, sondern die Integration, die Verknüpfung zwischen verschiedenen Systemen. Da gibt es die klassischen äh, Verknüpfer-Tools wie Zapier oder Zapier oder wie auch immer Leute es aussprechen. Und, und, um, Integromat etc. Über viele davon haben wir schon gesprochen. Um, wir sprechen auch im Interview nachher über das Thema am Rande. Und um, ein, ein weiteres, über das wir schon gesprochen haben, ist N8N, also N8N. Um, auch da tut sich was. Ich habe mit dem Khalid Samer, ich glaube, der ist Jordanier seines Zeichens, um, ein bisschen hin und her äh, kommuniziert und der ist mit dem Josu am Gange und versucht da gerade die Integration noch aufzubohren, damit Mautic halt eine richtig tiefe Integration mit N8N hat. Und das ist natürlich extrem vielversprechend, auch was jetzt DSGVO und solche Geschichten angeht. Und deswegen ist eins der nächsten Interviews dann auch tatsächlich mal mit dem, einem Menschen aus dem N8N-Team. Und auf das freue ich mich auch schon sehr. Gut, ein weiteres ist aufgepoppt, ein weiterer Integrator namens Pebbly Connect. Pebbly kennt der eine oder andere als äh, Subscri Subscription Billing äh, ja, Service. Also da kann ich halt Vertragsabrechnungen ähm, online erstellen lassen. Das Ganze ist ein indischer Service, die machen jetzt halt auch Integrationen, auch da habe ich wieder die DSGVO-Implikationen, aber es ist natürlich für die Leute, die ZAP ja bisher nutzen und denen das aber viel zu teuer ist, ist das definitiv eine Alternative. Von daher auch dieser Link in den Noten dieser Show. Ja, und lustigerweise auch hier hat Joey nochmal in die Tasten gehauen und hat ähm, ein kleines Tutorial geschrieben oder hat beschrieben, wie man eine externe Integration auch ganz ohne so einen Dienst machen könnte, nämlich mit äh, Webhooks. Ja, mhm. Da kann ich halt ähm, Mautic integrieren mit einer dritten, pa äh, dritten Partei. Ähm, dritten Party, Partei. <lacht> dritten Partei, danke. <lacht> äh, über API und unter, unter Zuhilfenahmung der Name der Webhooks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Das scheint ja wirklich ein heißes Thema zu sein, Automation. Ne? Ja, es, äh, ja, ja, Integration ist halt definitiv ein großes Ding. Native Integration ist natürlich das Beste, was man haben kann, aber manchmal einfach nicht da. Mhm. Und dann, ähm, wenn ich wenn ich eine Alternative habe und da halt 10.000 Kontakte drüber gehen, kann das schnell extrem teuer werden. Deswegen mhm. ist halt die gute Integration das eine, die rechtssichere Integration das nächste und die bezahlbare Integration das dritte Thema. Ja. Und ähm, ja, das, das Thema haben offensichtlich gerade viele. Mhm. Tja, tja, nächste Themenwolke, Marketplace, also Dinge, die ja, Mautic gerade erweitern, auch da haben wir nur ein paar Highlights rausgepickt. Was ich ganz spannend fand, ist ähm, Twig-Logik in, in äh, Kontaktformulare oder in Formulare einzubauen. Das ist eine Sache von Kusmani, also mtcxtendi.com, wie immer. Mhm. Ähm, wenn ich ein Formular habe, habe ich ja in der Regel Eingabefelder und die mappe ich auf Kontaktfelder oder Company-Felder. Und hier habe ich eine Zwischenschicht, die erlaubt mir halt Manipulationen. Da kann ich halt hingehen und sagen, okay, ich möchte das Formularfeld Vorname zusammen mit dem Formularfeld Nachname in das Kontaktfeld Name schreiben. Oder ich kann, ich möchte von der E-Mail, die der Mensch da angegeben hat, nur das Domain-Teil haben und irgendwo das Company-Feld ähm, E-Mail-Domain füllen oder solche Geschichten. Also ich kann halt viel rauf und runter manipulieren. Aber das ist ganz cool und ganz mächtig, ähm, wenn man es braucht. Genau. Ich habe auch noch zwei Tipps aus der gleichen Wolke. Das erste ist, es gibt ein Trello-Plugin für Mautic von dem Adrian Schmidt. Genau. Ich wollte gerade Schimpf sagen, deswegen musste ich kurz stoppen. Ähm, damit habe ich die Möglichkeit zum Beispiel sowas zu tun, wie aus einer Kampagne raus eine Trello-Karte anzulegen, wenn man denn in Trello sowas wie zum Beispiel Kontaktverfolgung macht oder äh, weitere Planungen vornimmt in Trello. Ja, der, der, der Arjen heißt übrigens schon, fällt mir halt auf. Ah, oh, ja. siehste. <lacht> dann haben wir das im Nachhinein ja auch noch gerade gezogen. Genau. Sehr gut. 
genau. Und es gibt äh, ein paar Skripte für PHP Storm, um dann ähm, damit zum Beispiel auch Mautic Templates besser zu bearbeiten. Mhm. Ähm, ja, das ist eine ältere Geschichte und ist eigentlich nur ein bisschen Konfiguration für PHP Storm, aber jeder Mautic Entwickler, der es noch nicht kannte, der macht immer große Augen und sagt, wow, warum habe ich das nicht vorher gesehen? Von daher auch das verlinkt wie immer. Und ähm, noch ein bisschen was ist von Himmel gefallen und zwar bezieht sich das jetzt auf einen Feature-Wunsch, den wir schon mal hatten, nämlich die Idee, ich möchte doch bitte UTM-Parameter äh, tracken können für Leute, die auf meine Webseite kommen. Zunächst mal hat Chris Calabro ein, ein Tutorial geschrieben, wie kann ich das denn tun im Rahmen von Formularen. Also Klassiker ist ja, ich habe eine Landingpage, Leute kommen auf diese Landingpage, bleiben da, füllen das Formular aus und gut ist. Dann kann ich mit Bordmitteln von Mautic ähm, tatsächlich die UTM-Koordinaten, mein Gott, die, die UTM-Parameter wegschreiben und weiß genau, wo die wo Formular wo, oder wo dieser Lead herkam. Ja. So, die Idee aber war ja ein bisschen weitergehend. Ich möchte ja auch sonst wissen, wo Leute herkommen, egal was sie danach tun. Und ähm, da hat erneut der Adrian Schimpf, die Grüße gehen in die Schweiz zu Idea2, ähm, äh, einen Pull-Request geschrieben und also Code hinterlassen. Oh Gott, gut. <lacht> Müssen wir rausschneiden, nein, was drin. Okay, der Code ähm, veröffentlicht einen Pull-Request, der genau das tut und erlaubt, dass die äh, UTM. Daten weggeschrieben werden. Es ist ein guter Code. <lacht> Gott, diese Wortspiele. Okay. Ähm, ja, und auch die Ruth hat, oh, hat an ganz, ganz vielen Stellen in die Tasten gehauen, die ist extrem landunter gerade, aber sie hat äh, für das dritte Quartal auch einen Community Roundup wieder geschrieben und äh, ein bisschen berichtet, was sich alles tut und äh, war wie immer sehr, sehr sorgfältig all das zusammenzutragen. Gut, so, jetzt haben wir einen Haufen Links schon in den Shownotes um, mhm. und jetzt würde ich sagen, gehen wir direkt rein in das Interview mit dem Juan Fach. Wie schon gesagt, ein Salesforce-Mensch mit, mit Wurzeln oder naja, mit, mit langen Drähten in die Mautic-Welt, weil er es halt auch sogar im Privatleben interessant findet und verwendet, aber natürlich aus der Salesforce-Perspektive spricht. Das heißt, also meine Perspektive ist jetzt nicht unbedingt immer dieselbe. Zum Beispiel sind seine Einschätzungen, ob oder bis zu welcher Größe Mautic geeignet ist, natürlich ein kleines, ein kleines bisschen geprägt von der Salesforce- und pardo äh, ähm, sicht Aber ansonsten, ich glaube, viele spannende Einblicke und Meinungen und ähm, auf geht's. And there we go. Welcome, Juan Fach. Welcome to the show. Thanks for being here today. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for inviting me to your podcast. Uh, I'm very happy to be able to contribute or express my point of view on your questions, and I'm ready to go. Yeah. Um, before we go into the questions, let's start by introducing yourself. Um, so... Who, who are you? Where are you located? And what is, does your professional life look like? Okay, my name is uh, Juan Fach. I'm, I'm a, a Salesforce deployment manager for one of the global um, automobile companies. And I'm, I'm involved in Linux uh, and open source since in 1995. I started with one of the first version of Red Hat. Oh. Uh, I'm original from uh, Cuba and Dominican Republic, but I have been living in Europe uh, for several years, almost a decade. And I'm working as a Salesforce uh, deployment manager. I'm a Salesforce certified, but also I have been involved uh, looking very closely to some of the solutions of open source. And one of them is, has been Mautic since uh, 2014. So one of the things is that uh, my relation with Mautic has been uh, in and out, uh, trying to look the evolution of Mautic and using in in different type of organization, a small business, or uh, having them for suggestion for the nonprofits. Um, my my relation with the marketing automation in that case has been mostly for the lead generation. Uh, B2B business and uh, non-profits. Okay, so um, let's step back a little bit. When, when you say Salesforce deployment, that, that's basically the CRM that, that you help customers with, I guess. And, and 
that also ties into marketing marketing automation there but that would rather be part of it, i guess right uh yes um well save for deployment manager in that in that case is the is the role that take care of implementation of multiple solutions of mark of uh salesforce in the platform and in that case uh, i'm in charge of of deployment of multiple solutions, in this case, Service Cloud, Service Cloud, and, and one of them is uh, could be Pardot for the B2B. And yes, Pardot is more into the marketing automation for Salesforce, and it covers all the communication and the B2B and lead generation, and but also is being used for uh, so for the nonprofit uh, arena or sector also, and also has been being used for education cloud uh, in order to promote and to uh, establish the communication with the students uh, with the partners and all this uh, this using similar and sometimes very localized strategies like a like a Mautic is using on the platform mm -hmm. so give us give us a little bit of history how, how did you first discover and get in touch with Mautic Okay. Um, well, as I mentioned, uh, since uh, in the year 2000, uh, I was in Dominican Republic and uh, we were working on the, on the marketing agency. So from that point, we were start using the common email marketing uh, or email uh, sending solutions that were in the open source uh, arena. There are multiple uh, solutions. So around the year 2014, I started looking uh, in the in the open source communities that the Maori can start making some noise. So I started looking for the solution. But at that time, it was very, very simple. And since then, from time to time, uh, I come back and I look at what Maori, I, I, I'm using Maori in my own domain, but I still looking and seeing uh, the evolution on different features. Um, because I'm in the middle of a bridge between the consumer or the customer and the business, I look at Admotic as an alternative uh, for marketing automation that could be uh, feasible for those companies who cannot uh, afford or they are not ready for using uh, Pardot. So Mautic is, I consider the Mautic plays a, a very relevant role <coughs> for a small, a small business and companies who are using in, in not even Salesforce, they are using any other solution, even Excel, uh, but they can start doing some market automation with their own business or website, their own consumer website or their e-commerce, either they are using WordPress or Magento or even Shopify. Mm -hmm. they can start using uh, Mautic and this is a very good alternative. Uh, once the user have migrated or they start using Salesforce, for example, they still can use a Mautic as an alternative. Uh, I think that Mautic could be very interesting for the a small business up to the middle, mid-range business, uh, 20 or 50 employees, um, which is, uh, is uh, the, where I see very good potential uh, for Mautic, uh, either connected to Salesforce, or I want to be biased uh, for Salesforce, but I think <laughs> that one of the topics that, we, that I, I think I can mention is that mm, Mautic could be a, a very good alternative. Yeah. Um. Yeah, as as an early adopter or early user of Mautic, uh, I think you also experienced long years of frustration because so little things were, move, were moving, etc. We are now in a much more dynamic phase. Um, but you told me earlier that you were not satisfied with with the current capability specifically of the Salesforce plugin for Mautic, um, and that's one thing that pops up. Uh, again and again, obviously, the, the importance of, of deep integrations with various uh, CRM systems, including Salesforce, very prominently. So can you describe to me the perfect integration that you would dream of? So if, if you have a, an example, that's, that'd be fair, or, or just certain features that you would uh, consider the, the really high end, not just the, the basic things, but, but what would the perfect one look, look like for you? 
So for, as I as I mentioned, uh, it's very good point. It's very good that you bring that that uh, topic to the to the table. As I mentioned, as a as a um, as a bridge bet, uh, between the stakeholders on the company and any company it could be a ten employees company to one thousand employee company. When you are discussing how the marketing automation strategy will be, uh, we have to take into account that uh, we can use Mautic for lead generation and b2b let's let's focus on this in this um on this b2b scenario mm -hmm. uh, i see that the Mautic have not been doing a very deep analysis about the of the feature from the business per point of view and business perspective so you look into or let's just say some people say that they are happy but i think that the interface could be more uh the ux can be more simplest simplest uh simplicity i mean so they can simplify more the interface they can make it more ux experience uh, uh smooth so they can just go into that uh this is one of the things that i can see that they should be i haven't seen the modic interface uh for for the operation change uh since a long time Mm. So let's go back into let's go into the capabilities of a uh, Mautic, the the email the email interface um, for building emails is is absolutely uh, not comparable if you, <laughs> if you are if you are looking at solutions like for example, um, BeFree.io is a mail builder that they even can do a a collaboration. I'm not saying that it's going to be for free. I'm saying that they can make a collaboration. Uh, the, this is one example that I like a lot uh, as a mail builder or or landing page builder because the the interface for for building uh, is is more weight advanced than the actual email builder. That it, that's one of the key things. Integration with other solutions that could be um, essential for businesses is like a. Uh, analysis for litmus uh, you can have yeah. integration and analyze your your email for the campaign we're talking about business orientation and business point of view and um, um, those are the things that the customer will love about to modic to have another i'm not saying that they should be even for free i'm saying that they should be the integration with the light uh, version and then they should be for about email builder is something that is. Then we jump into say for integration. I look at the the integration of Salesforce and I found I found um, Salesforce is getting more and more and more advanced into the um, Wizard for integrations and Wizard for configuration. I don't see that happening in the Mautic uh, interface. I see that the integrations are. Mm, not changed for the UX experience uh, for better and the integration with Salesforce is one of them that needs to be reviewed from the bottom. And one of the things is that our integration has should be uh, uh, first need to be able to focus and to target the main objects of Salesforce. It could be lead, contact and, and accounts and then opportunities <laughs> because when you are building the journey this is what uh, the competitor is doing. So mm -hmm. that's what Pardot is doing. Pardot enables you to communicate with the major object, and that's what Mautic should focus on that in order to be competitive uh, into that middle range uh, companies who are going to be deciding between budget and features. Yeah, let, 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 let me hop in, in here for a second just to make sure I get this right. Right now, we do have, or conceptually in, in Mautic, we do have contacts and companies, and that's it. We do have anonymous contacts and we have known contacts. And there's this mapping that allows you to say, okay, I want to sync my contacts with the leads, with the uh, contacts in, in Salesforce. I'm not sure about opportunities, I don't think so. Um, the the concept or the, the design, the database design um, on the model on the Mordic side will probably not change. So the the other thing I could think of, think of is is to flag a contact in in Mordic and say okay this one is an is in actual contact 
on the uh, CRM side or it is a lead on the CRM side or, or whatever and to be able to map it on that level because we, we can deal with different entities but but only with one at a time currently no but I'm, I'm not saying about flagging an entity I'm, I'm gonna give an scenario you are mm. you are um, in the in the journey mm. that is in, that you are capturing uh, a form from uh, in Mautic, uh, Mautic, if the form is Mautic is capturing from the website, mm -hmm. and then you the 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 customer is interesting into having a an installation of Mautic, and then it happens that you are connected to Salesforce, and yeah. that is going to become a lead. But at a certain time, you start doing a nurturing campaign with the customer. Yeah. So you are start sending information what is Mautic, what the Mautic can do for you, et cetera, et cetera. In the camp, and at one point of the flow of the journey, the customer is ready to pay for your service of uh, implementation. So, yeah. and that moment is when you are going to be able to go into the lead object of Salesforce and change a value and do a checkbox on that saying, you are ready to call that customer right now. Yeah. So that's what the, that's what Pardot does, and yeah. that's what I think in the in the in the capabilities of Mautic should be able to be able to talk to Salesforce in the right in the right time without going oh. through the database of this. Oh, I think it can, can absolutely account? do that. It, it, that that's a campaign action called push to integration, and then then there you can have a selection of all the um, campaigns in in the CRM, etc. So I, I think we're more so there than you think. About, you are talking about campaigns. I'm talking yeah, well, about okay, that, that, that is now that's a workflow. It's a little, little bit of different wording in, in on the Mordic side. Okay. So, but I'm talking about I'm not talking putting a customer in a campaign. I'm talking about going to the lead object who are are you ready push it to Salesforce and 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 changing the value that is going to be triggering a a workflow on Salesforce in order for the agent oh, to be okay. able to talk, to call the client. Yeah, okay, you want to have more granular access to the properties exactly. in the, in the exactly. object on the I'm Salesforce not, I'm side. Not saying, I'm not saying um, only for for putting data, in uh, pushing data into Salesforce or synchronizing data because mm -hmm. that synchronization is okay. When you are, when you are using contacts and accounts um, in companies in, in Mautic, is for the normal, I would say, uh, it kind of a standalone uh, usage of of, say, of uh, Mautic. When we are connecting to Salesforce, I'm I'm looking into more reliable uh, flow of data between Mautic uh, uh, data and and also in real time to Salesforce. I cannot wait. If you are talking about going back to the my point or my position is that when you are talking about a business that is generating twenty to fifty leads per day. You cannot wait until the the Mautic decided to synchronize the data. So I want you, to, I want to be able to right now, uh, right uh, right away, go into the lead object and say, "Oh, this customer is already ready for 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 buying or ready for for interaction." And then mm -hmm. I'm gonna put this flag, and this is still gonna do another process on on Safer. That's what I was uh, trying to say at this level. But this is a a business point of view, a business approach uh, mm. is more is more than technical. Is more than coding. Is looking at Mautic like, a, oh, I can be on that segment of the market in terms of a marketing automation. Yeah, that's what I'm referring with the with the uh, what I'm referring to the to the to the companies who are working for Mautic and development teams. Or even to the core developer of Mautic. Yeah. Why don't we look more into the business sides of Mautic rather than to say, "Oh, okay, yes, I'm I'm strong in the marketing automation. Yes, it is strong, but it is that's why maybe some of the business uh, are not looking uh, into into more into Mautic." Yeah. The yeah. other thing that I would say that I have my notes here, I think, is about reliability. Uh, to to be able to trust that nothing is going to break whatever happened into the process or maybe updates or installing a plugin. Uh, I think that that is still even myself and or looking at the forums every time that you look into a, on a grade something happens in Mautic or 
even or or you have to invest too much into into the process of updating or uh you need to have a, like a, a double system at the same one is for keeping the update and the other is for uh, the stable system you can have that but for example in salesforce we don't have this issue when you upgrade you upgrade period there is no nothing breaks and this is something that i see that a lot of people in the the modic community are complaining Ooh, what is going to happen now if i upgrade this yeah well <laughs> that's of course a, a mixed bag if, if you use i mean there are now multiple SaaS services for modic which take away that pain from you uh, but of course you have to pay, pay for it and if you decide yeah, decide for self-hosting then yeah, it's it's still not that mature yeah, that you then wouldn't then want go, a staging then, system. That's right. Yes, yeah, but when if you take that approach, that is very good that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. We are going back to we we are not going back. We're going back to the discussion on the table from with the stakeholders. So remember that the stakeholders in the company are always looking at business reliability and budget. So if I found that I'm using Modic and it's very good, but uh, I imagine that I'm a safer user. I'm using Modic as an alternative for not uh, going into a full uh, spec of, of safer solution. But if, the, if this solution is dragging me down in terms of uh, business operations and budget, because I need to maintain uh, servers, I need to maintain this, the stakeholders are going to start considering alternative for, for not having these uh, headaches. So we need to see, that's why it's very important that we need to think as a stakeholder or, or CEO or um, CTO of a company who are being under pressure for the management and say, oh, listen, how many times are we going to have this issue of, yeah. of a marketing automation tool failing? That's yeah. a, that's a conversation. They're not. They are not. Uh, they they don't even know that the Mautic is open source. They don't even want to know that Mautic and, is open and source. They shouldn't. They shouldn't. That's right. And I I think it's a good point that you bring this up because uh, there, there's also you know, there, there's those customers the higher up who just want a system that works and then somebody that that guarantees for that and gives an SLA in that. And there are also exactly. agencies exactly. That, that rely on on a certain tool that make a decision for a, a more marketing automation tool without that agency themselves be, having to be technical. They just want to use a tool that exactly. works and does a job. And exactly. so that, that's a big movement in, in the Mordic world too, where uh, having that SLA currently not from from a uh, from this um, open source project itself. So there are companies in the in the ecosystem who are giving that sort of support and guarantees and um th that is a bit of a game changer i think um so yeah i agreed and still on the feature side well there's there's room for improvement but we're pretty good i think we can do more than you have seen so far when it comes to salesforce integration on the business side i agree that that's that's still not there yet it, it's it's too fiddly and 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 things and um a lot of potential still um i, w I would like to to ask you about one specific thing though when it, when it comes to integration uh in your experience in your world did you ever try uh, external workflow automators like like uh integral mods apr n8n things like that would you recommend going that way when you want to integrate, say, Salesforce with any other system? Are you using things like that? Uh, yes, um, it's a very good point that, I, that you mentioned that. Yes, I, uh, I have integrated Salesforce with other system. And for example, in the, in, in, in the actual job, we are using uh, MuleSoft. Um, but as I mentioned, MuleSoft could be a high, very high end uh, for the small business or any other business who are not considering have, having this. There are multiple solutions of, of this. Uh, I would say that for integration, there are two things. Uh, or you want, if, if, the, if the data flow is not required to be real time, mm. do, you, do you have a lot of alternative? If the data flow do not require real time and and high reliability into the data you are not 
required to have the data right now, then there is a lot of alternatives like Zapier and all that. Mm -hmm. Also regarding security and regarding uh, data transformation, if you need that. So if you are in the high ends, it, there is also plenty of solution. One of them is, could be MuleSoft or other slots. For example, one of the things that you mentioned about Zapier is that if your business is not required real time, okay, you may use Zapier. Uh, if your business can hold to have uh, a downtime or maybe a, 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 a connection issue of the data uh, and you can hold for a couple of minutes, uh, even up to one hour, then Sapier could be an, an option. But if your data flow requires critical and connection, mm, like an e-commerce or this and that, I would say that I will I will take the position like uh, the other uh, with the stakeholders. You you wouldn't be very happy to be on the meeting where they say this is not communicating. We have a lot of issues. We have a lot of data loss, and then uh, you find out that is because you are using a third party. Then if you are in Europe, you need to also consider the GDPR. Of course. So. Yeah you are giving your data to pass through another system that you don't know if they are making a copy of it. And I'm not saying that they, those uh, organizations are doing that. I'm saying that from the compliance point of view, you have to go to your compliance manager and, and prove that your uh, data flow is complying according to the GDPR process because the auditors are going to come and say, no, I don't like it. I don't like it the way it does. So that's why I suggest, or you use an API connection uh, mm -hmm. if it is possible. Uh, the, obviously, if you're using a third-party connection for the API, uh, that is going to increase the cost for the for the business. Uh, that's another topic that we should see how how API of Matic is is going. I never use the API of Matic, but that's going to, going to be another uh, potential business niche for those who wants to build solutions connected by API of Matic. Yeah, I think it's it's uh, critical. Absolutely. It's a very, very big point. And there's also movement there. We have N8N as a self-hosted solution, which takes away the GDPR uh, issues, which is very promising. And um, yeah, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe it's an entry or a light lightweight solution, but if we want to be more serious, then, then you need the native integration or a completely integrated solution. Which brings me to um, the question, after all, you're a Salesforce person, which is uh, uh, not hard to tell. Um, mm -hmm. And in our world, depending on where in the world you look, we, we run across people who use Mordic or try Mordic or, and n never ever had an, an actual proper CRM system. So they, um, they th just may even start off thinking that Modic is now their CRM, which of course it is not. And then they um, look at what uh, what would they use for CRM. So let's talk about Salesforce for, for a second and uh, give us a quick pitch. Why should people take a closer look at, at Salesforce? Okay, Salesforce is not is more than the CRM right now. So Salesforce at the beginning was a CRM. Right now it's a platform with a lot of solutions and a lot of prices. So a lot of um, a package that the, any any companies. You can start with Essentials. So that's the best option that I suggest to any client. Uh, you start looking at Essentials. If your business are a small business or middle middle size uh, business, up to fifty or even a crew. Uh, 50 users, you can start using Essentials. Essentials is up to 10 users, but it's a very good, very good entry point for uh, managing, automating, and organizing your business. So stay, uh, staying away from your crazy Excel sheets or maybe your your databases or your complicated uh, data uh, cleansing and all of that, you can keep your business organized uh, in this. Uh, yes, it's, there is a lot of uh, CRM solutions in the market, but I think the number one uh, right now, uh, without questions, is not because I say so, because I'm 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 very 
involved into the into the into the ecosystem uh, a lot of organizations are showing that it's not a perfect solution they have some drawbacks i would say in some in some aspect but in general speaking for anyone who wants to start having a crm in their business uh i would suggest to to take a look they can approach any crm partner a uh, safer partner and they can uh, have a demonstration start with the demonstration Okay. And, and there is a lot of, uh, uh, as I said, there is a lot of plans or package or pricing. You can start with Essential, and you can, as long as you can connect Essential to Mautic, and then you can start evolving uh, onto professional all of that. As much as you get your business on top of Salesforce, you're going to have more uh, reliable, organized, uh, maybe you start doing a lot of uh, organ uh, automation, uh, lead generation, and you're going to start seeing the, the real value of having a CRM uh, like, like that. Okay, give me a good link for, for starters or two, and I'll put them in the show notes. Um, okay. And on the other, other hand, with all your experience at hand and, and all the market insight that you have from different angles, from, from the part of the angle, from, from the CRM angle, from the open source angle, what, what is your message to the Mordic uh, community and to the Mordic ecosystem and to the open source project? What should we concentrate on? What should we... Um, what markets should we go for, etc.? What, what, where do you see the potential, and what, what's your recommendation? I will. Let me uh, suggest because I'm. Uh, say, I would say that there is three points: business niche, business support, reliability, and and a smooth integration with third parties in general. Mm -hmm. But I would say business niche. Uh, Mautic can have a very good position in the ranking in the middle, in the small, in the small, when I say small, is from two employees, four employees, up to 20 or 30 or 50 employees. In that range, Mautic can be very effective uh, as alternative solution for those companies who are uh, promoting a B2B or Uh, non-profits or a small business or any level and e-commerce that wants to do but they need to look into the business perspective they need to go out from the open source and sit with the client and said those are my problem from from the customer point of view also don't assume that there is technical people on the business that's so uh, that was my mistake too i always think that because i know everything on on the on the technical part I assume that those people knew what I was talking about. I was wrong. That those people don't know anything about technology. They don't know. So we need to make the the inter the UX uh, of the solution more easy to for them to understand. Because we, we are not going to be always with the client. The client can kick us, and they they say, "Well, it's open source. I'm going to keep it." So fine. So the client is going to say in a couple of the weeks. Uh, this solution doesn't work and there is going to be someone else with a solution that is having more easy and friendly interface and is they're going to win uh, and at that point. Business support. There should be a more uh, business approach uh, for all of them, for all of the companies who wants to have a Mautic working without downtime. Not a 90%, no, 99.9%. And when I install something, uh, my operation doesn't work or I don't have to rebuild the journeys, I don't have this. And the reliability on upgrades and on, on, on anything. Uh, and also on the business uh, connection. There shouldn't be not only connection to uh, Salesforce in a smooth way, like uh, like we say, like Windows, and so you say next, 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 and the co is connected because it's happening on the on the other solutions. Why we cannot having a Mautic, and also connection to uh, the more popular solutions on on the, from the business side uh, in a more easy way, uh, in a more reliable way that anybody can do it. So that we can focus on the business rather than in the, than the, in the technology. Mm -hmm. so Excellent that's point. One of the things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank, thank you very much. Oh, you got more. 
No, no, no. It's um, these points, and we all we need, we need to uh, because I always come back to Maudic, and every time that I'm working, for example, with a nonprofit, uh, I I try to suggest because also you as I mentioned, you need to look into into two points, two sides. The the customer don't have the budget, or the customer is not ready. These two things. If the customer is ready then maybe they doesn't have a budget. And in that sense, you can evaluate what, uh, based on the requirements of a client, what is gonna be the right solution. For example, in a case of a nonprofit, you can go ahead and propose Modic. But if you, if for example, if I go to Modic and I found that it's not ready for giving that to the client and, and leave it alone uh, with the, with the Modic, uh, I'm I'm feeling that I'm gonna be betraying the customer because I'm go the customer gonna say you bring me this and it's not <laughs> working as I expected, yeah. and then my reputation is gonna be in, in question. So that's one of the things that I always feel that uh, in some cases Maudic is not ready yet in that point. For the rest, is very good. It it do, it does the work, but I think it's for uh, the Maudic, uh, the core people at Maudic, or maybe the core people uh, mm. very active. I would say with the Maudic community, mm. can can start looking more into the business side. Yeah, but they can I, choose. I was, uh, they, mm -hmm, yeah, I, I I've been thinking why why you said all that, and I think this this bridge between the business needs uh, and the actual development is is uh, very critical and um so far it's it's not like like the core devs go out to businesses and ask them what what, we, what they need it's, it's the other way around it's like modic agencies the whatever project manager sales people whatever whoever is actually talking high level to to customers need to be able to feed that back into the core development and uh, we're, we're coming up actually with with a format um, for that where we have some tiny little teams tiger teams for feature areas like like crm integration or whatever your issue is email builder and um, they uh, they will rely on an input like that and we will try to formalize that and give a give a way of, of giving input like that into the development and make it happen really rapidly so that's one one good thing and the other thing that i like that you mentioned earlier uh, when we talk when you talked about be free template builder um is the notion of integrating paid services into modic i think th there's nothing wrong with it 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 it's an absolutely valid uh, business model and, and it's enriching modic and and if there is a like a freemium version of that even better and we we may want to motivate people into doing more like that looking into it reaching out to to complementary services there's all sorts of services like uh, like like we we as an agency we we work with uh deutsche post for sending post postcards out of modic which is of course a paid service or we work with databases um who can enrich uh or who can deliver company data even for anonymous contacts uh, which is a paid third party service etc and if we have more like that then that makes modic only better and it's a win-win situation for everyone so yeah now, now that you now that you mentioned that i don't i don't i don't want to go back to the to this topic but uh you look at the from the business point of view from the business perspective when you are open modic and you have a small team of two people uh doing email marketing and they are gonna build that mm. when you present that email builder to them they say i cannot work with that mm. because so you want you i want to do no more uh, nicer, more responsive, more reliable things on, on this. I want to do, uh, for example, some, uh, all of these. I cannot do it with this, uh, with this builder. I need yeah. to go. And then when the most of the client is doing, like you are aware, they do, they're building the email outside and doing that inside. That means that you need a developer outside. So why, why don't we put everything on the same solution and we try to cover all of that? Because marketing people are very, demanding on on that so, i mean marketing the ones who are building the strategy not the ones who are coding yeah yeah of course and and the email builder is a really visible visual 
thing. Everybody can easily grasp it and e easily criticize it. Um, on the other hand, there's a lot of movement there, with multiple projects going on to come up with a better email builder. So I'm optimistic there too. Juan, thank you so much for your time. Mm. We're recording this on a Saturday and I really want to let you go back to your family. Um, thank you uh, very much for having was, me. It was it, been a pleasure. It was fun to, to have the in, in, uh, insights fr from, from uh, um, yeah, I would, yeah, competition, so to say, but also someone who, who is part of the Mordi community. So I welcome you there, even though you've been there earlier than me. <laughs> um, no. And I thank you so much for your contribution. I, I hope we talk soon again in the future. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks. Anytime. Take care. Bye bye. bye. Ja, äh, super Interview. Ich finde, man merkt natürlich, so wie du es praktisch zum Eingang ja auch schon gesagt hast, an manchen Stellen fehlt schon ein bisschen der tiefere Einblick in Mautik. Ne? Und äh, wir alle wissen ja, dass da mehr geht, als er sich gerade so vorstellt. Ne? Ich glaube auch, ja. Also entweder hat er sehr, sehr früh sich das zuletzt angeguckt oder nicht so richtig alle Ecken sich angeguckt, aber ich glaube, er hat ein paar Punkte übersehen, mhm. aber ihr habt ja auch gehört, so, wir wollten nicht allzu tief in die Technik gehen, das passt schon. Ne? Ja, genau. Gut, ganz anderes Thema, ich hatte ja vorhin erzählt über die Mautic 3.1.2 und tatsächlich ist die Planung jetzt auch so weit, wie der Plan das ja auch vorsieht, für die Mautic Version 3.2. Da gibt es tatsächlich einen Sprint vom 6. bis 7. November und vom 21. bis 22. November. Geplant ist der Release Candidate für den 23. November und die Verfügbarkeit soll am 30. November dann da sein. Das heißt also alles dieses Jahr noch. Ja, ja. Und äh, also Norman und Dennis und Team sind da natürlich sehr engagiert und das also einmal vor, einmal, ein, einmal nach der Mauticon, merkt man mhm. ja. Genau. Ähm, das häuft sich natürlich alles und ähm, ich bin sehr beeindruckt, was die da alles wegrocken. Ja, super. Wo wir über die Mauticon sprechen, das große Ereignis steht vor der Tür. Ja, genau, gar nicht mehr lange hin. Ähm, die Webseite mauticon.mautic.org ist ja nun seit einiger Zeit schon online. Der vorläufige Schedule, also die Agenda, ist inzwischen auch da mit sechs Tracks und Pi mal Daumen 60 Talks in diesen Tracks, mhm. also vollgestopft mit jede Menge ganz unterschiedlichen Content, zum Teil auch in nicht englischen Sprachen. Wir haben einige deutsche Talks, wir haben aber auch, was weiß ich, japanische und sonst was alles Talks und ganz viel Englisch dabei natürlich. Also wahnsinnig viel Futter. Tickets sind weiterhin erhältlich. Ich glaube, ab 5 Dollar ist dieses Pay What You Want Modell. Also ist ein bisschen gedacht für die naja, Länder, wo die Leute nicht so auf Rosen gebettet sind. Die können dann wirklich 5 Dollar bezahlen. In anderen Ländern ist 20 Dollar oder so dann auch sehr gerne gesehen, weil das Ganze für einen guten Zweck ist, nämlich unser geliebtes Mautic. Und ähm, noch, noch lieber gesehen ist äh, Sponsoring. Es sind viele Sponsor-Slots jetzt schon weg. Aber also ich glaube, es stand jetzt, wo wir aufnehmen, ist noch ein, Silber Spot, äh, äh, Slot da, äh, diverse Bronze und dann gibt es ja auch den Community Slot, also für alle, die einfach nur, was weiß ich, eine kleine Summe geben wollen oder können und trotzdem ihren Namen verewigt haben wollen, gibt es die Con Community Sponsorship. Schaut euch das mal an und schaut, was ihr tun könnt. Ähm, kleine Ergänzung zum zum ähm, eigentlichen Mauticon-Event ist ja der Training Day, der einen Tag vorher stattfindet und übernommen wird von dem Training-Sponsor OS Training oder Open Source Training. Mhm. Ähm, die haben inzwischen halt auch den Ticketverkauf begonnen. Da gibt es, glaube ich, für schmales Geld extrem gute Mautic-Trainings für alle, die also entweder für Einsteiger oder für Fortgeschrittene sich nochmal ein bisschen was antun wollen. Äh, macht das gerne, ähm, guckt euch das an, alles von der Webseite verlinkt und es gibt noch einen Voucher-Code, einen Gutscheincode, wie ihr 25, also von diesen bereits günstigen Preisen nochmal 25% runter bekommt, der heißt OST Mauticon 2020, alles ein Wort und auch das gibt es in den Show Notes. Cool. Gut. Und wenn wir schon dabei sind, hier mit, mit äh, Bananen und Blumen um uns zu werfen, <lacht> Ach, ihr merkt, den norddeutschen Fischmarkt gefrischt. <lacht> 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 Wir haben selber, wir sind, sehr, wir sind ja selber auch Sponsor bei Leuchtfeuer und haben halt auch Freikarten und haben uns überlegt, wir verschenken die einfach hier. Ähm, wir freuen uns ja sowieso immer, wenn jemand den Mauticast auf den sozialen Medien äh, erwähnt und, und ähm, 
das Wort weitergibt. Äh, wenn ihr das tut und dabei noch Hashtag, Hashtag Mauticon verwendet, also zusammen mit AdMauticast oder was immer es ist, und ähm, vielleicht noch das Wort Ticket oder irgendwas reinschreibt, damit wir es erkennen können, dann äh, verteilen wir die Freikarten, die, die wir haben, solange Vorrat reicht, gerne an euch. Genau. Ne? Also, kauft euch gerne die Tickets, aber für den Spaß, twittert oder Facebook oder was auch immer auch gerne zum Thema Mauticon und Mauticast und dann könnt ihr sogar eine Freikarte haben. Ja. Ja, da haben wir es wieder. Ich glaube auch. Mann, das war wirklich viel Info. Ich denke, mhm. schon nur zu lesen, Links angucken, hilft auf jeden Fall. Ja, genau. Ich habe auch das Gefühl, wir sind ziemlich durchgerannt heute mit angesichts dieser Masse. Ich bin mal gespannt, ähm, was der nächste Mauticast so sein wird. Wir haben ja auf der Mauticon auch einen, einen Fünf-Minuten-Slot, wo wir einen Blick hinter die Kulissen wagen und geben. Oh Gott, oh ähm, Gott. Ja, ja. <lacht> <lacht> ähm, ja, ihr seid herzlich willkommen, euch das auch anzuschauen, wenn ihr sowieso bei der Mauticon seid. Natürlich alles online, das brauchen wir gar nicht mehr zu sagen. Ähm, und wenn nicht, haben wir bestimmt einen kleinen Bericht von der Mauticon für euch, für alle, die nicht den ganzen Tag dabei sein konnten. Ganz sicher. Jo. In diesem Sinne, wir freuen, euch, freuen uns natürlich auf äh, ein, eine Interaktion auf der Mauticon, selbst wenn wir nicht Bier zusammen trinken können oder sonstiges. Hm. Und ähm, hören uns ansonsten wieder in alter Frische nach dem Autikon. Bis dahin. Tschüss. Tschüss.